Yo, what's up everyone? Brian here, and we're going to be taking a look at Miracle's Alchemist in this video. So, he's going to be playing him mid, and let's just get right into it guys. So, for a starting item build, he's going to be starting with a Cooling Blade, a Stout Shield, a Fairy Fire, one Iron Branch, and then two Pooled Tangos. So, this is a pretty standard starting item build. The Cooling Blade is obviously really good because Alchemist is a farming mid, Every time you go for last hit, you want to ensure that you have a high probability of securing the last hit. Um, his base damage isn't the best. Doesn't have the best attack animation either, so it's almost always a good investment on Alchemist to start with a Coring Blade. Um, Stout Shield, he wants to be able to mitigate damage, stay high in HP. If he's high in HP, it decreases the chance that the Pudge ganks will be successful. Obviously you see Pudge pressuring him. And right there, he just popped his Fairy Fire, guys. Even though he was on max HP, um, so definitely a misclick, but it does happen. I, you want to be able to, like normally you want to just sit on that Fairy Fire because uh, it gives you two damage. Uh, it can help you out. It can help you survive ganks. Um, all around, it's just an amazing item right now, but you know. Even the best players have misclick, so that sucks. He'll have to play around that now. Um, so he pops himself. One thing I didn't mention, guys, is the moment that the courier got to him and brought him his salve, because he bought two slippers of agility with his starting gold and or with the bounty gold and the starting gold that he that he had saved over, and he also bought a, bought a salve. And when he brought it over to him on the courier, he also popped his tango right away to give him a slot. And the Tango, it's HP per second, so it was still useful. Just something that I didn't mention. So, he also buys a Wand. Um, the Wand's it's pretty much always a good buy against Storm Spirits, but even, but especially in this game, because he's always going to be pressuring the lane in. Like, every time he uses Acid Spray, he's going to be pushing it, pushing the lane into Storm Spirit's side. Storm Spirit's going to be having... He'll have to do a lot of last hitting under tower, and if Miracle's kind of just playing around him, um, he'll be able to get easy stick charges because Storm Spirit, in order for him to guarantee the last hits, he's going to have to be using uh, Electric Vortex, or Static Remnant, I mean. So he'll be able to get a lot of charges, and the charges are also going to be good because it's just going to make Pudge's ganks even less successful. Um, but yeah... Even and even still, like Storm will have to, be, he'll be low on mana too because he's going to have to constantly be using his mana to get last hits under tower. So stick is definitely really good, and he's going for a ring of regen. So he's going to be going for the soul ring build, and it's pretty strong. Pretty much, I feel like most alchemist players go for that um, instead of the bottle recently because. Bottle's been nerfed over the patches, guys. It only gives 60 per charge now, so 180 mana for the entire bottle use. And Soul Ring gives... It gives 150 mana on a 30 second cooldown, guys. And on top of that, you also get the 50% mana regen. So every 30 seconds, you're, it's about as much mana you'd be getting from a full bottle. A fully charged bottle, guys. So... Soaring has kind of replaced it in that in that sense, but I still think that on some other farming mids, like let's say a Juggernaut, um, the bottle is going to be the better buy because on Juggernaut you're going to be playing a lot more of an active early game. Like if you get a haste, if you get an invis, invis rune, you can get really active on the map and help your teammates. So right here, he throws down the acid spray and then just goes for some auto attacks. That was definitely just overcommittal by the Pudge. Not much to say there just went over to the Shadow Shaman immediately. But obviously that was that was definitely a good play by Shadow Shaman to be in that area. But yeah, Soul Ring is definitely really good. But like I was saying, if, if you're on an active mid and kind of like a semi-carry mid that where you have the potential to be active, but you also want to farm with like let's say a juggernaut, um, if you sometimes you will be able to bottle up a haste or an invis rune and um, use it to be aggressive when you you see an opportunity, but he's playing alchemist. He's not, he's not going to be 
aggressive until he gets until he gets um like two items up, guys. He's just gonna be playing around the mid lane, uh, playing around his jungle. So he just wants to be able to farm as much as possible. So the strong soul ring is gonna be really good. And right here, he's gonna be going for a stack. He pushed he pushed the lane in by using the acid spray. Cleared it as fast as possible. Coming over here, and let's see how he does this. So he's gonna probably gonna be pulling it at 55. So he throws out he throws down the acid spray at 53. Stack the the medium camp. And then he pulls the hard camp at 55, so that should be a double stack, and that's just going to be a lot of a lot of gold that you can get uh, at a later time during this game. So it's really important when you're playing a mid, like Alchemist, like Shadow Fiend, like a TA, that once you get to the stage where you can actually start pushing in the lane, that you push in the lane, you go and stack, and then you can kind of just save the stacks, take them at a little bit of a later time in the game. And then you can start snowballing off the influx of gold that it gives you. Definitely helps a lot with your item timings. You know, pretty basic stuff, but something that you want to be doing. So he missed the stack right there. He went and checked it, so that's definitely unfortunate. But it is a harder camp to stack. So he's right there, he's using his crawling blade on it to give the the creeps actually a route to go through. So it's gonna make the stacking a lot easier. Okay, so he's pulled it at fifty five that time on top of eating through. So that should definitely stack that time, I'd imagine. Um, but yeah. He ate the tree, or he cut down the tree, and then gave the creeps a path just to increase the chance that he actually got the stack off. So he pops his ultimate right there. Pretty much always just want to be popping your ultimate. It gives you mana, um, and when you're just kind of like farming in the face of the storm spirit, and it just ensures that you're going to be High in, H high in HP. <laughs> and the Pudge just comes around with the flank. Misses the hook. Uh, so Pudge has not been very successful in this game. He already died of the Shadow Shaman. That was some pretty clowny... Pretty clowny movement right there. But he doesn't get the stack again either. So that's just kind of a, sh kind of a shitty, shitty camp to stack with Acid Spray. I think you really do need to be pulling it from the front, but he, he wants to prioritize stacking the hard camp. Because that'll give him more gold than stacking the medium camp. Pudge goes down again. Um, so yeah, he, just, he, he sacks the hard camp, and then he's just coming right back mid. Throws down the acid spray preemptively. He knows that the creeps are going to be coming. Um, he should have the entire acid spray duration for these creeps, guys. And on top of that, he was able to throw it down early just to get the catapult down even earlier so no wasted time on the acid spray um, he didn't wait until the lane creeps met with the catapult to throw it down just throws it down right away knows that you know he's not going to be wasting any of the acid spray duration and he's just going to be going into an armlet also pretty standard there was a time where well there was a time where people weren't going for armlet, but armlet was also work worse back then, so rushing the radiance was arguably better in a lot of situations. Gets a good bounty run right there. It's definitely a big deal that he was able to just get that. Um, but yeah, now with armlet also providing the extra five armor once you have it active, on top of the five base armor that you, that it gives, um, there's really no reason not to go for it. Um, helps with your survivability, helps with your farming speed. Like it helps with your farming speed enough that, uh, let's just say you're in a game where you're not taking too much pressure, you're still going to get around the same time um, with a with with just a Radiance compared to just having, with going for the armlet into the Radiance. Like the timings, they will definitely be different. Um, the armlet build is going to have a slower Radiance timing, but the fact that the armlet allows you to stay higher in HP, it means that you're able to farm in a little bit more difficult situations or difficult areas because you're going to be higher in HP, your survivability is going to be better, and it gives you more damage. So you, like, for this, like, just right here, he's able to clear these, clear the stack out a little bit faster. So the timings aren't that big in terms of when you actually get your Radiance. And of course, once he gets the Radiance, he's still going to be a lot more tankier compared to just only having the Radiance, so... 
Our build is definitely very good, guys. Hopefully I didn't confuse anyone um, with the way I just explained that. It's low on HP, and he's not going mid. He's just kind of sitting around this area. I think he's a little bit worried. Yeah, he's a little bit worried, maybe, about going back mid. He sees the storm top, actually. But he wants to be able to stack this and then immediately go for the rune. That's why he didn't go and clear mid initially. And let's see, is this going to be a bounty rune? Nah, it's double damage. It's still not that bad. It's a pretty decent rune to get. Helps with your farming. Just going to attack these creeps down. Keeps the stacks up. As his braids go, it's still going for a little bit right there. And he should be able to go mid with only missing two... Nah, he definitely misses more than two creeps right there. This is like four creeps probably, but still. Clears out the medium cap a little bit faster, so he doesn't have to do as much backtracking. I wonder if it would have been more efficient in the long run to go immediately mid and then go straight towards the medium camp, but either way, because of the backtracking issue, it's probably not that big of a difference in terms of the amount of farm that he... Well, it might have been because he's kind of just sitting around here idly right now. There's nothing more for him to really hit. So he's going to be going for the stack on this. And going straight back mid. No point in him taking out the stack right now, guys. Um, uh, kind of a common mistake you'll see from like lower level players is they'll stack it and then they'll immediately take it. But there's no real reason to do that unless you think that your stack is going to be stolen. Because if you take this, if you take the stack right away, you miss out on the lane creeps. So that's just less farm that you're given. Um, and lane creeps are still really good at the stage of the game. You're still utilizing your own lane creeps damage in terms of helping you clear them. Um, and with just the way stacking works, you're not missing out on anything basically. Um, in terms of the, in terms of your jungle farm, unless you have enough damage and movement speed that you can basically go from camp to camp and clear ex extremely fast. Like of course, if you're like an anti mage, you can basically just stack it and then take it immediately once you get your battle fury. Because at that point, you'll have to worry about backtracking and uh, he just clears he clears areas so fast that he can just kind of just go straight in between them but at this stage of the game um, you want to stack it and then go straight back to mid and then just play around the rune timings which he's been doing gets an illusion rune it's not it's actually not that bad of a rune right now because he has the armlet um, so armlet does apply to your illusions he's gonna send that right to the enemy jungle right to the enemy jungle, he should be able to get a few camps with this, probably two. Um, elf will do a decent amount of damage. Actually, they're staying pretty high. He's definitely going to be able to get more than two, actually. But, he goes to check bot rune, Storm has already got it. And he already has 3.8k gold. But yeah. Um, he sent the illusions towards the enemy camp for the enemy jungle guys because of what I was saying like he, he already he's already efficient enough that he can clear mid and also kill the medium camp around here and get a stack off so in terms of his area there's not really too much extra farm that he can be getting in terms of keeping the illusions near him or sending him down mid lane for example um, so he sends them towards the enemy jungle another thing he could have done is he could have had the illusions sit mid I guess and then have them clear the lane creeps while he focused on just clearing his own jungle. But with sending the illusions to the enemy jungle, he also denies some of their farm. And he goes right for the recipe first. So pretty standard. Like, he could get the relic and drop maybe the poor man's shield or the quilling blade. No, definitely not the quilling blade, but, but the poor man's shield if he wanted to, but it, it doesn't really boost his farm significantly enough because the way alchemist works is once he gets a relic he just he just gets the extra gold needed for the recipe just so incredibly fast that you'd, that you'd rather just sit on the the poor man shield to negate more damage um, make you a little bit more survivable in terms of gank so he drops the wand right there yeah the poor man shield is just going to be useful for long for pretty much the entire mid game it's 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 a really good value item guys so he does drop the stick, and he, he and he doesn't need the stick at this point either. He's not really a, 
by anyone to get any charges. He doesn't have to worry about his men anymore. He has level 2 ultimate. So he drops that instead of the shield. Clears out that clears out that camp. And yeah. It's coming straight back mid. Clear the entire area. Like he has the radiance now. At this at this point, he doesn't have to worry about stacking and then taking him a little bit later. And the Pudge, he's the Pudge has had a rough game, guys. Um Yeah, to say the least, but so he's pushing in mid. Putting on like this is gonna give him a lot of farm. And he's also putting pressure on the enemy team. He knows that he's survivable enough that he's not at risk of dying. He sees the LC top and he knows that the void is bottom still. Like he's not at risk, so he just pushes in mid for another wave. And he's coming straight back to the jungle. Activating his armlets so to attack it down a little bit faster. He's saving his acid spray. Saving his acid spray, and he's coming straight for the ancients. He's porting top now because he has his boost of travel. He, yeah. Once you get the nice thing about this build, guys, is with the armlet is you can actually get really active right after you get your radiance because you're you're incredibly tanky. You can armlet toggle. You have the ten armor. You have the massive amount of HP on top of your alt regen. Um, so you can get active, especially once you get the travels up. So the enemy team has to worry about him at this point. Like if he only, if he went for the old school build, and I say old school build, but like just a few months ago, if he only had the Radiance straight into the Boots of Travel, you're just, you're less likely to kind of see those type of opportunities. Like those, those type of opportunities arise a lot less because you have to play a lot safer. You're just not on, as high in terms of... Um, in terms of survivability, you just cannot get aggressive like that. Goes for the Yasha. And just gonna be going straight for the Mansa. Very, very standard. Port's in mid. It's near ancient timing, so he's gonna stack this. Yep. And then he goes straight for the body rune. Not wasting any time, being as efficient as possible. TP'd mid just to stack the ancients. Like, even though he was already top lane and he was some distance away, um, he's just going for maximum efficiency, guys. Not even si not even holding it for, in case he's able to, kind of turn around turn around a gank like he was able to in the top lane. Just being as efficient as possible. So he's still looking bottom. He knows that there's. Uh, Definitely enemy heroes down there, but he's not worried. Um, he knows that if he just plays his, his safe farming game, he'll he'll get to a point where he can kind of overwhelm the enemy. Um, unless the enemy team is able to kind of shut him down at this point. Like once the alchemist gets his radiance and his manta, it just becomes incredibly difficult at that point, guys. You pretty much have to go late game and then try and get six slotted on. Say like your LC, your Storm Spirit in in this game, for example, and then kind of stall the game out to a point where the Alchemist's six slots um, aren't as useful. But he, but even right now, you can give people eggs, so it extends Alchemist's usefulness for a little bit, and he can need Moon Shard. So and he has his Manta, so gonna be straight going gonna be going straight into his Octarian core, which he has in his quick buy. Pops his Manta and the Acid Spray. So popped it right away once he got it, once he got around mid. And he's keeping two there. Sometimes you'll see players have one illusion in the lane, and then they'll send one illusion into the enemy jungle to even get even more farm. Even more farm denial for the enemy team. Oh, right here, guys. He's, he turned off his Radiance, by the way. Just to make sure that he gets a stack off. So definitely really smart play. Especially for a stack like this. Or a camp like this where you need to stack it at 55. You either need to turn it off. Um, and then use your Acid Spray to... You either need to have it on and then use your Acid Spray to stack it. Or what he did there was just a smarter play. Turn it off and then 
uh, just turn it on once it hits 55 and then stack it with that method. But yeah, sometimes you'll see what he's doing right now where he'll send one one illusion into the jungle and then one illusion that's going to be pushing the lane. This is pretty much how you maximize your farm. Like, you don't need two illusions in the lane, guys. Um, very common mistake that you'll see players make. They'll have, they'll once, on very common on heroes like Naga as well, is they'll send two illusions down a lane when they don't need to be. You only need one illusion in the lane to get every single last hit, um, just with some, some micro. And then you can send the other illusion to maybe run enemy supports, get them lower in HP, or more often than not, you just use it to send it towards a a jungle jungle camp, and then you get more farm, being even more efficient. But right there, he's actually sent two straight down mid. I assume that he did that in that situation because he wants to be able to put on as much lane pressure as possible. Because he's not playing entirely... Um, like, Alchemist isn't just about playing super safe once you get these items up. You want to actually... You definitely want to worry about your farm still and try and get 5 or 6 slots as fast as possible to go for timing push, but you want to be aggressive on the enemy team. You want to be aggressive on the map, exerting exerting lane pressure so that once... You know, he's constantly pushing him in. Like, the enemy team has to react to this, guys. Like, they have to react to top being damaged with the illusions. Um... So he's doing tower damage, he's stealing the enemy team's farm, he's playing on his side of the map, and then that allows his PA and basically everyone else on his team to just kind of make plays and get, get farm on their side of the map. As the enemy team just has to, has to stay split, I've talked about this before. Just this type of split push pressure, the enemy team has to get split, it means that your team is able to just kind of outnumber them across the map. Alright, so he ports in to the Hawk, so he's getting aggressive right here. He knows that this is just a good engagement for them that he can clean up in, but those are a stun, but wasn't able to get the, get the kill on the Pudge, but it's still a 2 for 2, definitely a trade he wants to take, and at this point he has to be, he has, he has to be worried about comeback gold, guys. It's about a 10k gold lead right now for his team. So any deaths that his teammates give up are just going to be a shit ton of gold. So that's just another reason why it's important to play aggressive on the map once you get a lead like this. Like he's really at no risk. Sure, you might be able to be a little bit more, be able to get more, be a bit more efficient in terms of um, just kind of like staying on your side of the map and focusing on clearing your own jungle and clearing out your safe lane and your mid lane but you're not putting on as much pressure and then that just means that allows the enemy team to kind of just make plays across the map and get kills but with the way that he's playing right now where he's constantly pushing in top lane and mid lane and stealing the enemy jungle he's taking away not only their farm but their opportunities as well because they have to stay split they have to defend this defend against this uh, multi lane pressure Two illusions, two illusions in lane right there because he's just getting damage on the void. The void is attacking him. He's, he got him lower too, so he kind of. That was actually a really good play um, by him right there. He went straight back for the void, guys. After he saw that the void was just trading with the illusions, a lot of players kind of probably would have just mindlessly farmed at that point. So definitely, definitely a good play right there. And he has his Octarine Core. So Octarine Core um, works with the Radiance, gives you a lot more survivability. If you're surrounded by five enemies, you're, you're leeching on them with the Radiance damage, with your Acid Spray damage. Makes you even more survivable. And decreases your cooldown, which is also another big part of it. Because it allows you to almost always have your... Increases your ultimate uptime. And your illusion uptime from your mantle illusions. They're just engaging mid. Kind of just steamrolling them right there in that fight. They have no way... The enemy team has no way of actually winning a fight if if Alchemist is, is present. And he's going right for the moon shards. Right for a moon shard. 
actually, what does he have in the courier? What did he just buy? Oh, Mjolnir, Mjolnir, okay, yeah. So he has a Mjolnir, and now he's going to be going into the Moonshard. So his attack speed is pretty insane. Um, yeah, and he just goes straight for the damage follow-up. It's a damage follow-up, and it gives him even more AoE damage. Uh, do they have vision? Yes, they do. That is a dead LC. Um, you know, maybe if the game is a little bit closer, or maybe... Or maybe you don't have as big of a lead in the game as Alchemist. You might want you might go for an AC just to ensure that the push is going to be pretty strong and to increase your survivability. But he's not worried at this at, at this point yet, guys. The enemy team just doesn't have enough damage for him. There's a triple right there, and yeah, I don't actually. <laughs> there's just no way that the enemy team is going to be able to stall this out, guys. So let's just kind of play this at 2x, see what happens. Yeah, this game's actually just fucking over, guys. You know, some people will s will say, you know, uh, you know, Dyer has a chance, but it just is not happening, guys. The enemy team is just kind of falling apart, and they need to have a bigger lead at this point, or just shut the alchemist down. So let's just kind of go to the end. It looks like it drags on. Probably some tower diving shenanigans or something. Let's see. I will show the score screen, guys. I know I'm not always the best with that. Let's see if it pops up even. So it's just it's just not gonna pop up actually, guys. So here is basically this the score screen, I guess, right here on the left. Um yeah, anyways guys, hopefully you enjoy this video, learn something from it. I'll see you guys later.